Well, good evening everyone. It's after five o'clock again and uh, it's results time for the rules quiz that I sent out this morning. Thomas is here to help along, as you can see, holding one of the uh, laser rangers in his hand there because that was one of the questions as well. And we'll get to that shortly. Uh, but thanks to everyone who sent, uh, sent in the quiz sheets. Got lots of those back. Um, not as many as yesterday's competition. And I think that's probably because we're all a little bit afraid of what we know in the rules department or maybe what we don't know um, because it is quite complicated and things like this, even when you get a chance to sit down and go through them, still quite difficult. Uh, but we'll fly through the questions and let's see how many you've got right. So uh, you might want to look at your paper and have a look and see what, uh, and see what you put down. So, question one was a player may place a club on the ground during the stroke to aid alignment. So that means that somebody puts a club down to make sure that they can aim parallel to that and get an advantage. And the answer is A, it's false. You're not allowed to do that. Fairly straightforward, that one. Question two, if it's 75% certain that a ball has not been found, it's in a penalty area. Um, the player may take the... Uh, take back on the line of relief from the penalty area under a penalty of one stroke. So if it's 75% certain that a ball that has not been found is in a penalty area, well that is A, false. It has to be 95%. So uh, it used to be 100% and they came down 5%, but not 25%. So if you put A, that's the correct answer, that's false. Question number three, a player's ball uh, in the rough lies on loose material caused by a rabbit digging a hole. Is the player entitled, the player is entitled to free relief? And that's B, that's true. So the rabbit scrape is part of the abnormal ground conditions. So the actual um, uh, sand that the animal burrowing is brought up, that's part of the um, abnormal ground conditions. So that was B and that's true. Question number four. Um, any area of sand on the course, whether or not prepared, is considered to be a bunker. That's A, that's false. Obviously a bunker is a designated hazard area and you get lots of different areas where there's sand, you know, loose impediment sand on the other side of a bunker, on an apron, on a green, etc, etc. So the answer to that one was A is false. Question number five, now this is the one that caught most people out and there was probably only one or two people that actually got this right and they could have been guesses, I'm not really too sure. Um, it, it seems the most obvious but it actually isn't. So a player hits her shot out of bounds from the fairway. When dropping the ball under stroke and distance, she must drop the ball as near as possible to the spot from where the last stroke was made, no nearer the hole. Now, pretty much everybody put A, and that was true. Whereas, in fact, it's B is the right answer, and that's false. Because under stroke and distance laws, you're actually allowed to drop within one club length of your nearest point of relief. So, in that situation, you are allowed to use a club length. So, the answer was B, and that's false. And that pretty much caught everybody out, even the staunch rules officials amongst you. Question six. If a player makes a stroke in a round at a ball on a non-conforming tee, he's disqualified. Well, there's a question for you. What is a non-conforming tee? I had to look this one up myself. And that's a tee which is over four inches long. So there's something I didn't know. Um, if your tee is over four inches long, then it's a non-conforming tee. Well, the answer is B, and that's false. Um, in, uh, in match play, uh, it would be uh, loss of hole, and in stroke play, it would be a two-stroke penalty. So they're not disqualified, but there is a penalty involved for actually doing that. On to question seven. On the first hole of a stroke play competition, a player uses his distance measuring device before he hits his second shot. And then again, before his third shot, the device he had the ability to make an adjustment for slope, and this was turned on. What's the ruling? Well, 
Most important part of the question is that he's actually breached a rule twice. So in that situation, he's disqualified and that's A, disqualification. There was all sorts of answers, four shot penalty, etc, etc. Now, if he'd have used it once and realised that that was the problem, then um, uh, he, uh, he may have just been penalised two strokes in his stroke play or loss of hole in match play. Now, this is the reason we've got the laser with us. So this one is the, the new um, V5 laser from Bushnell. And a simple switch here, by clicking it backwards, this part becomes red and now the slope is active. If I press it the other way and it's now gone black, now I've deactivated the slope and it's legal for me to play. Slope you would only have on when you're out on the course practicing and you're learning yardages and how far the ball is going. So really that wants to be off all the time, obviously especially in competitions, but they do give you a bit of leeway for one offence. So on to question eight. Uh, in stroke play, a player starting a whole place from outside the team ground uh, the player incurs a penalty of two strokes and the ball must be played as it lies. Um, well, that's uh, actually uh, B. That's false um, because you don't play it from where it lies. The, play, the shot would have to be replayed and it would be played replayed from the t uh, uh, team ground again, from, from the tee, under a penalty of two strokes. And if you fail to rectify that situation before you tee off the next hole, it's disqualification. Question nine and final one. The line of play is part of the conditions affecting a stroke. That's A, that's true. And it's the area of intended stance or swing. That's the line. So that was A. Um, and uh, that's the end. So nine of the questions. So one, two, three, four, five, six of you got eight points. Colin Avery. Gary Skivington, Val Howard, Charlie Foster, Juliet Dunlop and David Dunlop. Bit of, uh, a bit of spying going on in the household there, I think. All got eight marks, just one wrong. So congratulations to you all. So we've got everything in the pot here, ready for the draw. So whoever comes out of the pot wins the um, specialised putting lesson. So can we have one of those out of there, Thomas? Pick one you like. Can you undo that one for us? Sure. And who's the winner? Colin Avery. Colin Avery. Well done, Colin. Putting lesson coming your way. Thanks for everyone for having a go. We've got some videos on coaching to send you in the morning. Have a great night and we'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you.